On Monday, Sergeant First Class Jeremy Griffin, a Green Beret on his fourth deployment, was killed in Afghanistan. The posthumous Bronze Star and Purple Heart he was awarded are little consolation to his wife and children. Sergeant Griffin is the 17th American killed this year in Afghanistan, 18 years after the war there began. The growing post 9-11 generation of military veterans is returning from the battlefields overseas to a new set of challenges at home. In our Sunday Closer, Tom Brokaw visits a group of vets telling their stories from the stage. I never should have left you, man. This is my fault. Some stories you simply have to live to tell, which is why Scott Mann wrote his play, Last Out, Elegy of a Green Beret, because he was a Green Beret for almost 20 years. The longer this war goes on, I think the less people are aware that it's actually happening. Mann spent the years after 9-11 deployed with the Special Forces in Afghanistan. When he returned home, it was difficult to convey what he endured in combat. It's our obligation to help people understand it, because if we're going to keep sending people into harm's way, we got to know what we're asking them to do. That's my wall of honor. It started as therapy, pouring out his experiences on the page. But he soon found that he had a real play on his hands and a powerful tool for healing. I built this to help Caden understand why I had to be gone so much. It's just amazing how you put people in the room and they connect around such a hard subject. Wake up. America doesn't can care anymore. Besides, who wants to be the last out of Afghanistan? The cast and crew, all Special Forces veterans, or from military backgrounds, bonded together with a new purpose, staging last out in 13 cities this year alone on a shoestring budget. We literally built it from the ground up. We bought our own lights, brought our own sound in. Uh, everything about this play we've earned as we go down the road. This tour is not easy, is it? Oh, no. I, driving in New York reminded me of driving in Baghdad a few times. <laughs> You've got to be aggressive around here. Who do you think picks up the pieces of what you boys break over there, huh? This past weekend, performances with special meaning in New York's East Village, more accustomed to late night improv shows than plays about veterans. Your friends die doing exactly what they love because they are green berets. Oh, come on, look around, Lynn. People back home. <laughs> you know, when your dad and my dad came back from Vietnam, they threw dog at me. I know. And now they thank me for my service. But I'll tell you the one thing that hadn't changed in all those years, people back here don't know what we gave up. Our motivation and our drive is the loss of connection with our country, with our, with our veterans, with the, with the military families. Man took his crew to ground zero, sacred ground, and the touchstone for their new mission. What is the impact that you hope that it will have, not just for the civilians who are seeing it, but for the veterans who are seeing it and also participating in it? That we ran a good race. You know, that, um, that it mattered. That what we did mattered and that what we do still matters. And this isn't such a bad country to live in after all. And it's worth fighting for. What a wonderful story, Tom. I, these, this really is a scrappy operation. When you talk about them raising the money they can to get the lighting and the audio and everything else in there and taking it across the country. Yeah, some of the, uh, some of the cast members actually drive a car with a trailer behind and the rest of them fly coach from time to time. We have to remember, Willie, as we sit here, there are people on duty right now yes. in Afghanistan and in places we don't even know about. That's right. This war has been going on for 18 years, and what they do is bring it to these small audiences, the reality of what's going on, and at every appearance, people walk out of there with a kind of different attitude about the war, and sure. they're deeply, deeply moved by it. But it is, it's a shoestring operation. They're going to Chicago. I don't think because they've got a theater yet, so we're going to try to help them with that a little bit. I think it's a good idea for Americans across the country to hear this story and from these people in particular. Tom, thanks so much.